So, let us start with this uh, Metta Bhavana. No? So today is the official day that we start this Metta Bhavana. And it's all my retreats uh, during in the non, non-virtual, uh, when the intensive retreat, everything, we all start off with uh, basic beginner's understanding of the practice. <coughs> Sorry. Beginners, all this beginner stuff that we need to to understand. Yeah? Because these are again the basic part that we cultivate it as when we get better, then things will become more uh, finer, then certain things will start to change. Yeah? But in the meantime, you all got to bear up with me. We, then we go through all the beginner stuff. Because some of you also I've seen that you have uh, some metta meditation before. Well and good, that's perfect, you know. But there are also many who are completely new to meditation, who have a, who have a zero practice of intensive meditation or any form of meditation. Yeah? And the number of you here also have a, a background in vipassana, and many of you background in vipassana. So we're going to see later on what, how we're going to adjust everything here in this uh, practice of metta or cultivation of metta. Yeah. Uh, for those who do not know, who are very new, <coughs> usually we use the word metta in terms of loving kindness in English or sometimes they translate as friendliness. But I think the friendliness is not very good. Uh, I think just loving kindness will do. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, first, before even you start off with even how to walk and how to sit, uh, we need to start off with the right state of mind. If you don't have the right state of mind, you meditate after five days uh, later, puncture already. <laughs> So you make sure you have the right state of mind and then when we start off with the right state of mind, you make the, the you registered for how many days, then you, you make sure that you stay for that how many days by starting off with the number of things, even before we do the walking and sitting. Yeah? Now firstly, in order for us to understand the whole concept and how this meta is related to the whole Noble Eightfold Path, to the whole practice and everything. Uh, firstly, let's look into the purpose, why we are here. Yeah? Let, let us look into the purpose. Let me share the screen with you. Yeah? <clears throat> now, <clears throat> oh, can you all see first? Can I? Okay, good. <clears throat> Firstly, the purpose of metta here. There are usually there are two goals when I mean, we look at it. Uh, but for me, I teach this metta is for number one, not really for number two. No, but doesn't matter because if you if you have number one, if you don't wish for the number two, the number two will come to you. <laughs> yeah. But if you, in your world, in your day-to-day life, if you want to have number two or any, without the number one, uh, then you are missing out completely on the teachings of the Buddha. <laughs> anyway, let, let me, let me um, explain this a little bit. Uh. Now here, the purpose of metta uh, is that uh, this is to support us, the supporting the endeavor for the liberation, for the Nibbana, for the ending of samsara. The metta itself does not give you the ending of samsara, but the metta, it really supports you in terms of it clears away your hindrances, it clears away especially your anger, your hatred, your ill will. Then, when it clears that, then when the wisdom arises from the vipassana and therefore 
when it arises, those vipassana will help you. It smoothen the way so that you can able to reach the goal. Yeah. And and also, uh, metta is one of the four guardian meditation of vipassana. Yeah. Uh, one is metta, the other one is the Buddha Nusati. And then Buddha Nusati is the reflection on the virtues of the Buddha, the nine virtues of the Buddha. And then you have the 32 parts of the body. And then you have the uh, contemplation on death. Uh, uh, that is also very interesting. Uh, because at the, you know, just now earlier on when we do the guided meta, uh, uh, then also in other times, uh, when I was in, uh, when we are teaching also, we also do guided death, the contemplation on death, guided, di uh, guided this and that, 32 parts of the body and so on, you know. Uh, so, so here, the whole purpose of metta is to support our endeavor for liberation. And then with that cultivation of metta, whether, as I said earlier on, where you don't have that worldly goal also, it will come to you because the nature of the metta is to give you that comfort, to give you that joy, to give you that happiness. And that peacefulness, joy, comfort in this very life, uh, this is, we need those things in order for the mind to able to go into a deeper concentration. Without this joy, without this peacefulness or happiness, uh, then it's going to be very difficult. Uh, so the metta is kind of like it helps to smoothen out your path or your road for you. Uh, it smoothens out the pathway with this joy, with this peacefulness, with this happiness. Mm. So this is the first thing I make myself clear. Uh, for then when I teach meditation, it's always for the noble goal. Uh, it's not really for for just happiness in the everyday life only. But the problem with the problem with lay people. Uh, is that you want the number two rather than the number one. <laughs> you want the joy here and now. Noble goal, uh, Nibbana can slowly can wait. Uh, you, know? you don't want the, those things. You want the peacefulness, John Ford, happy, being friendly, being kind. And the family is happy. The family and your office worker are happy. Now I radiate the red meta. Then I go to office. People are happy with me. Uh, then okay, enough ready. <laughs> That is all worldly goals. This is all worldly goals. Mm. And a lot of you, when, when they discuss about meta, uh, especially for lay people, you love the number two rather than number one. Uh, but I have to change completely your mind here that when I teach, when you come to my, me, it's always for the first one, not really for the second one. But nevertheless, the second one also, it will come and we're going to discuss about it also as the, as the day progresses. Because as I said, you need that comfort, you need that joy in this very life, not even not for the next, uh, in this very life itself, uh, that is going to be very helpful for your liberation. So this first thing uh, is your right view and your right intention ready. Uh, if you don't start off with the right view and right intention, then you see someone like Aliyah, you know, and, and do what you like and do what you think is right. Uh, and then it's, you're not going to achieve anything much. And then it's the, 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 when you, especially when the worldly goals are being your most important one, uh, uh, then the meta is kind of going to go very deep. The meta is going to go somewhat here and there or near. Uh, uh. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so this is the first thing that you have to keep in mind, uh, that we practice this meta here in order to support our noble effort path, to support our vipassana and so on. Uh. All right. Uh, this is very. This is to make it clear to all of you. Second thing is on your sila. Yeah. All right. 
Now, the second thing is on your sila. Whether you're walking, sitting, or later part, we talk about the also on the daily mind, daily meta, that how we're going to do everything you need sila. You've got to begin with sila first. And this sila is not just your five precept or your eight precept. Uh, this is a bit more expanded part of the sila. Now, when we talk about the Noble Eightfold Path at that time, uh, when we talk about Noble Eightfold Path, in the heading of morality, I mentioned that there are four types of morality. Not the right livelihood, not the not just the right action, but how the mind and the, how the mind and how our speech and everything blend together. Yeah. Now, first of all, this type of sila is going to you have to have a lot of first of one the external type of sila. That means it's need your it's connected with your action and your speech. You know. Yeah got a action in a speech. The first one is this aditana. You got to make a strong determination or strong vow. Just like when you do your taking your five precepts, uh, when you're taking a five precepts, you're taking a vow. Then you're not going to kill, not going to steal, not going to, going to cheat and, and so on. Just like this, uh, as also in the meditation also, that type of mentality, uh, that type of you put that sila, that strong sila, you also should put that strong sila in that type of aditana, that strong determination and that vow. And as, I, as I said, that during in one of the four types of sila, the, the sila of number four, is that vow, is that the, is that the strong aditana that you have made, then you go according to it that you do not break that particular vow. Yeah? Uh, uh. So for example, this vow, you, if you promise something, you make an aditana, you promise something for, to somebody to do something, uh, that is part of the aditana, or part of the vow that you have put into it. Yeah? Now here, you have to determine your determination is to be directed to block your time for sitting and walking. Yeah? To block your time for sitting and walking. You must determine. Let's say you, you sign up for group B. And then in group B, you have... Uh, Two to two to um, eight hours between two to eight hours that you are supposed to give me, yeah, and then during this time you block your time from of your of your daily schedule of your daily life, and then you determine okay morning let's say I want to do uh, one hour in the morning before I go to office, or you still go to office or you, before you start your office work at home. <laughs> Since you may you may not able to go to office, but you still have a lot of things to do. All your daily daily duties and responsibility, perhaps you need to go to market and uh, shopping and to shop this and that for your daily use. Yeah? Or you got some business go going on and so on. And, and I said that uh, you can do those things. You can do those things. But then for the next, for the coming 10 days, uh, you make sure that you have you already blocked your time. Okay, morning, uh, let's say I want to do one hour of uh, sitting. Fine, good, you do some sitting. And then in the evening, uh, I think in the evening, I have more time to do my walking and sitting. Good. Then again, you determine what are the time that you want to do it. Uh, yeah, and you set it up, set it up the daily schedule for yourself. Uh, then when you when you put it into that, some of you may want to write it down. Well and good, write it down if you wish to. If you do, don't want to write it down, but you keep in mind that this time, you're going to block your time and then you have no other responsibility for you to do. Yeah. You cannot like, suka suka, you go here at your time. Suka suka, you do other thing, you know, as you like. No, this is. Some people ask me, 
Bante, do you've got daily schedule or not? Uh? I mean, how to give you a daily schedule when all of you are totally different right now? now? <laughs> when we are in the retreat center, uh, that is a different thing because you've got nothing else to do except meditate. Uh, here in at home uh, is very different for each and every one of you. Now, if you're a beginner, totally a beginner, I suggest you to put a daily schedule. You write up a daily schedule. This time you want to do it for this, then another time you want to do for for your work. Uh, you want to do, I mean, you want to deal with your children and so on, and uh, husband or wife and your business. And then after that, you must have again what you want to do later part in the evening and so on. Uh, uh, so, so you may, in that, like for example, four hours you want to do, you can break it like one hour or three hours. But my recommendation uh, for you is that it will be better to do it in a stretch. Uh, if you have a four hours, it will be better if you have that four hours, if you can find it now, you know. If you could just only got two hours per day, uh, then try to make it at two hours. Uh. If you break one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening, uh, then sometimes it may not work so well. Uh. Uh, two hours, you need, like for example, when you need to boil water, uh, you need to put it there longer. If you turn on a little bit, turn off, turn on a little bit, turn off, turn on that, turn off, tabule, uh, like that. Uh. So you need a longer time. So if you can, uh, if you can, again, as I said, there are many of you are going to be very different. Uh, uh, so in the group A one, uh, I expect you to have eight hours or more. The more, the better. Because, well, if you have those ta those time and you don't have to work, you don't have to meditate at home, then well and good. Then go ahead. Uh, uh, all right. This is the first thing. You've got to make a very strong determination. Don't let anything and catch out you and disturb you when you already block your time for that sitting and walking. Okay, number two, you got to restrain all your senses. This one is when you are number two, uh, it's going to be difficult uh, for a lot of you. Your phone and your computer and your TV and whatnot uh, is going to be very difficult sometimes even to let go. But again here, it's a lot, you have to make a lot of awareness and uh, this one this one's, this one again uh, in the coming to the restraint part uh, is also another part of morality when the Buddha said when this type of morality is the morality of the senses you got the senses so you got the senses of what got the senses of all your phone and computer these are the things uh, that that give rise to what sensual desires uh, uh. it gives rise to all the sensual desires on uh, this one so your phone your computer you put this everything aside either you off it you put it in your airplane mode you put it far far away from view don't try to meditate uh, and put your phone beside you oh I want to use it as my alarm clock yeah, la, you first or second time you use an alarm clock. La. Later on, after a few times you sit, la, every, every, every ring comes in, every <laughs> whatever thing comes in, you want to see, you want to look at your message, you want to desire the gain, la, no? the determine, <laughs> just to see, just to, just to, you know, just to see who, who, who sent you that message. So that one, you got to put it aside. I cannot I cannot be there but if you are in a retreat uh, usually we will we will remind you again and again and some places they even take away your phone for the duration that you are there uh, let's say two weeks they take away your phone for two weeks three weeks uh, you same until you go back they give you back your phone your computer everything to you uh, uh. now here again during this time when you are meditating uh, when you are meditating, that time when you block your time already, uh, make sure that all your household duties, office duties, responsibility, you put it all aside. You restrain yourself from doing it. Because perhaps, uh, for example, you may do some walking meditation. 
in your garden, let's say, uh, in your walk. Uh, then after that, you saw your flower. Yeah, my flower, my plant, uh, not enough water. Uh. Then bakey, bakey. Yeah, if you forgot already, you're going to take water and then you're going to pour into them. <laughs> then after that, you want to continue again. Cannot. cannot. <laughs> Those things you cannot do like that. Yeah, you you see something. Uh, um, you walk some. You walk, and then your eyes are open. Then you saw that oh, my, uh, the place is a little bit dirty. Let me sweep first before. No, normally you walk halfway already. You don't do that before you want to walk. Huh, you want to sweep first. Okay, everything right already. Then you start. Once you start, you don't go and disturb yourself already. Yeah, and also here also because you are at home. Huh? Uh, sometimes you don't want to disturb yourself, but others will may disturb you. You walk, walk, walk. Then after that, your granddaughter comes. Ama, Paul, Paul, what are you doing? Walk so slow. <laughs> you know, if you have all these type of things uh, at home, uh, you got to somehow or another you got to tell them to put everything aside. Uh, you ask them to put, ask them not to disturb you during this time. Yeah? So you got to convey these things to them so that you don't fall into their trappings and all that, you know. So you got to ignore them for a while while you are doing this meditation. Uh, this is this is a very strong temptation when you are at home meditating. Uh, even even right now in Peace House also I hardly able to not 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 to say cannot, but not easy for me to meditate because there are so many things here and there. When I go other places, everything is not mine. Uh, then it's easy to, to meditate. Here at home, everything is yours. The people you love is yours. The, the sofa is yours. The TV is yours. The computer is yours. Your phone is yours. Everything is yours. That's why you attach to it so strongly. So before, even before you start, make sure you restrain your, your senses. The second one is more of an internal, not really sila here, but here, here some of you are into vipassana meditation and also vipassana may be in-breath, out-breath, or maybe rising, falling, or even other form of meditation, you know. Now, here the first thing is that you must tell yourself you must resist from going into this vipassana. You must, again, your aditana, you got to put it as up already because when you start meditating uh, when you start to slow down in your walking or when you start to have more calm in the sitting then at time your vipassana or your main object will start coming in already and at time uh, you will have a dilemma what to meditate now now both also I want you cannot one. You cannot have two together, lah. You have to really have to stick with meta. And you put, as I said, you have to put your meta. Oh, sorry, you have to put your vipassana or other form of meditation aside first. Even though it's going to be very tempting, even though it's going to show you some rising, passing away, even it's going to show you some good rising and falling. This time you got to put it aside first. Then you go into meta. If not, nah, you the moment it is calm and then your your vipassana object it starts to become very clear, then you want to go inside there. Then after that, your vipassana not clear. Then you would think you want to go back vip to metta. And then after that, you go back metta. Metta also is not clear. Then I after that, you are neither here nor there. Then after ten days, nah, you mong cha cha. You come up also. You do not know what you are doing. <laughs> so a lot of you here, which I've seen, nah, in the forms, uh, there's over 80% of you are doing vipassana. Yeah. And 80% also have come into my meditation in previously before. Yeah. So there will be some strong urge for you to go into vipassana. That time you got to hold, hold it back. Uh. Uh. Now here again, other mental phenomena such as lights and joy and so on. That also you try to resist them. Uh, you stay with your metta. Okay, you stay with your meta and you make sure that you don't. This one we will discuss in another other talks a bit more detail. Eh? But in the meantime, if you have done some meta before in the past, if there's lights and everything, don't go and attach to the lights. Make sure you come back to the meta again. All right. So this is the first thing. 
make sure you already have that thing before even you start off with your meditation. So the discipline part is very important here. Uh, then the next thing, now you are when you're going to start, uh, there's also a few things that we have to bear in mind. But once you bear this in mind, uh, then it's much more easier. You don't have to you don't have to think about it again and again. Uh. Okay, the first one. If you're a beginner uh, in Buddhism or in even in this one, first one if you have to reflect on the dangers of anger or an ill will. Yeah? You reflect on, dan- on the dangers or the unwholesome uh, or the unhappy resultant of anger and ill will. Okay? Now, when you reflect on these things, you have to reflect in the right mind also. You know? Don't reflect everything is connected with our I want to know. Uh, make sure it's like, for example, sometimes people reflect the anger or ill will wrongly. For example, let me see. Uh, oh, don't get angry, don't get angry. If I get angry, uh, then next life, uh, I'll be very ugly. People don't like me. About what? It's all about I again. Everything I. <laughs> you love your beauty, you love everything. The desire is there, you know. <laughs> Then you reflect on this ill will and then you think about it. Oh, I mean, it is true that you will be ugly if you have anger. But the thing is that you are not looking at it from the point of cause and effect. But the cause and effect, and you turn it into yourself, you know, you turn it into I, that I am will be ugly, that I am will be disliked by other people, I am will be this and that, you know. Uh, very much about you. Uh. Uh, some people, again, when they reflect on, for example, dana, if I don't do dana, next time I will be not wealthy, it's going to be difficult, everything again, I. Yeah, most of people is that. Whether, is it actually wrong? Not to say that it's totally right, but is it totally wrong? Well, it's not totally wrong also, but the problem is that I is always there's there. So when you reflect the anger, you reflect in such a way uh, that anger and ill will, this is not wholesome mental state. When they're not in a wholesome mental state, it will give rise to unhappy resultant, whether in this life or in the future lives. Uh, in the future lives, those who have anger will reborn in the woeful planes of existence. Those with anger, there will be ugliness. Those with anger, there will be, you know, there will be a short life, perhaps because they may kill, may they still cheat due to anger. So you reflect something like that. Huh? And again, I'm not going to go into the detail because we're going to look into anger a little bit more, perhaps in the other talks. Uh, then again, you have to reflect on the benefit of patience or the benefits of patience, not one. Uh, the benefits of patience or forbearance. Uh, it says that forbearance is next to Nibbana, for example. Uh, so this forbearance, this patience, again, you have to reflect in the sense that you will go through difficulty in all forms of our everyday life and also when it comes into meditation, there will be a lot of difficulty. There's not going to be, just just because you think that is meta, everything soon soon, everything smoothly, jalan already, is it? No. There will be hindrances coming in. There will be temptation coming in. The five hindrances is waiting around the corner, just waiting for you to sit and walk. They will start popping up already. Uh, so you got to be patient. Uh, we'll teach you how to overcome those things also. Yeah. Now, again in the beginning, number two, in the beginning, I put that in the beginning, uh, that means if you're a beginner or you are beginning in doing the meta, then there are five people you should not cultivate upon. But when you are much more accomplished meta practitioner. And when you are more accomplished meta practitioner, we 
encompass everyone, every being, whether they are hostile to you, whether they are love to you, and so on, you know. Finally, metta is to encompass everyone. But if you are in the beginning, you don't play with this yet. Yeah? This Because our mind is not softened yet, you know. Our mind is not softened yet. So we need we need certain degree of uh, certain degree of avoidance in order for the meta to arise. Yeah? <clears throat> uh, can you all hear me? Is it clear enough? Yeah. Some people cannot hear. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now the next thing, uh, um, what is a dearly loved person? The dearly loved person, uh, it means that it means that the people around you, your loved ones, your husband, your wife, your children, your your chuchu, your granddaughter, your grandson, your these are all your loved ones. <laughs> Starting, you don't use them for your this one for your object of your meditation. So don't start off with them. Yeah? Don't start off with them later. This one later. Now, some at one time, uh, at least I heard uh, whether it's true or not. This the 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 husband or the wife started to radiate meta to another you know, wife, maybe radiate the meta to the husband, and then radiate, radiate, and then it begin to turn from meta turn to sensual desire. Then after that, they end up in the bed together. <laughs> and cannot, <laughs> cannot, cannot. This is not meta anymore, yeah. So there is a there is a so you don't go with your loved ones yet, no? So the first thing you don't do that. Second one, the antipathetic person, someone you have strong aversion to. That means people that you dislike, uh, you have strong aversion to, yeah? that you hate and so on. Now this your enemy and so on. You put them all aside first. Uh, you put them aside because now sometimes you think of them only. You get very angry. Uh, perhaps all of you are staying at home. Uh, maybe you don't like your neighbor, <laughs> so don't think of your neighbor yet. <laughs> so something like that. Uh, some you have strong aversion to. You don't start off with those things yet. Maybe people in the office or anybody you don't like. You put it all aside first. Neutral person. Neutral person is people that you do not know. That like people on the street, uh, you do not know them. You you perhaps you've seen them, but you do not know them. Uh, that one also in the beginning, you don't start with that. In the beginning again, you don't start with the hostile people or hostile person or persons. Yeah, people that is hostile to you. That means they can create a lot of harm to you. So when you want to radiate this. You, you you don't have like aversion to them, but these people can have a can can give you a lot of problem. Yeah? So this one again, when you do it to them, instead of meta arises, then it creates fear, worry, and whatnot. You know, uh, so this one you be, you don't start off with them yet. Yeah? Uh, then the fifth one is the dead person. Dead person also you don't start because they are dead and gone. So. So they are dead and gone. You don't start with them also. Okay? Perhaps they already start off with the next life, but you do not know where they are. But nevertheless, the dead person, you don't start. So the five things here, the five people here, uh, you try not to cultivate in the beginning. Uh, so this one, even before you start off with your walking and sitting. <laughs> so you think you think that uh, metna, easy, easy, roll through. Yeah. Uh? No, no, no. There's, you want to start off, you start off properly. Yeah? Then, what's next? Okay, this, the next one is where we're going to look into a little bit more. Yeah? <clears throat> now, there'll be, in the coming talks, uh, as I said, tomorrow, I also need you all to come in again uh, at 8.45. Only for tomorrow, for Tuesday and then Wednesday. Because as I said, the beginning part, I need to cover the basic aspect in order for you to get started with the meditation. Uh, so here, 
we're going to have walking, sitting, and daily activities. In all the walking, sitting, and daily activities, then there will be like, like we need to use certain words in order to arouse that metta. Uh, metta here, to arouse this metta, is to give you a feeling that metta is like a, when you truly wish somebody well. Uh, for example, nowadays uh, we don't have much metta. Even when we say good morning to somebody, do we truly mean it or not? I'll just lip service on it. Uh, only three kong song there, yeah. uh, only lip service only. We, but we don't truly mean the person, the person that we wish them. But if you truly mean, it's a you wish them a good morning, or you wish them sometimes in the Buddhist in the sometimes in the Buddhist circle, uh, we wish them may you be well and happy. Now again here, are you providing a lip service, or are you truly do you truly mean it? Then when you truly mean it, uh, that may you be happy, you kind of like very altruistic that you wish the person to be happy. Not just say only. Uh, uh. So metta, it needs that kind of heart. That the heart that it can be generated, not only can that heart can be generated, it can be prolonged for a period of time. Just like mindfulness, you can prolong it for a period of time. And not only that, it can be strengthened for a period of time that you can go into a deeper and deeper concentration. So we want you to bring that metta up. Uh, we want to bring to give rise to that metta. Uh, truly, that you can able to feel it from the heart that's coming out. Uh, uh, so, <clears throat> how do we arouse this metta? Now in the text, uh, in the text, we, let us begin with this simple text first. Uh. Although some of you may not like the words, uh, but nevertheless, let us start off with this first. Now a lot of you may know the metta chanting, right? Ahala vero and so on. Uh, yeah. That one, ah, uh, uh, yo, yes, yes, yes. Before I forget, uh, don't start off your metta with the song first, you know. <laughs> Because if you're going to start off with the Ahang Ave Rohomilu and meditate, yeah, you can forget about meditation because you will like the song rather than the meaning of it. Yeah. <laughs> so first, <laughs> don't bring the song in because that one is going to be very, uh, very addictive. Uh. <laughs> Belia one again, keep on going, rolling, rolling. One, uh. So try, if you can, if you can. Uh. Although here we're going to discuss a bit on the Pali version, but when you are doing it, it will be better you use it will be better if you use the normal words that you use, like the normal language that you use. If well, let's say you are Indonesian, you want to use the Indonesian language perfectly alright. If you are Chinese educated, if you are the only want to use Mandarin, then Use Mandarin perfectly all right. If you feel comfortable with Hokkien, then Hokkien, okay. What, whatever language that you feel, it's okay, it's okay that you can able to bring the meta to arise that meta. Okay? Yeah. Now, when you have that idea, yeah, then we use certain words to arouse that meta. And we start off with Ahang Awe Rohomi. Homi here means here is the when you see me uh, m i uh, means in Pali it's also like in English is I also la me also you know ahang avera avera here the word avera here is without hostile action or without revenge vera is hostile action revenge or things like that you know uh, so 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 without harm or without Danger that will befall on myself. Yeah. Uh, so I, I wish myself that I will not have all this harm and danger. You truly wish yourself, like, like for example, that like you are another person and you're looking at yourself and you wish yourself, oh, may I be free from that harm and danger. Uh, uh, some, of, some of it may not 
able to use the word enmity. Yeah? Because last time I thought enmity is full of enemies, you know. <laughs> Which in a way, it, I mean, in a way, like, you know. But it's not that. It's more like harm, you know. It give you, give you that harm, give you that danger. You know? So enmity is more like harm and danger in, in that sense. Huh? Some, sometimes uh, the word itself may not be so familiar with us. So if it's not familiar with you, uh, uh, then you drop that particular word. You use the words that is meaningful to you, uh, that is meaningful to you. Good meaning have a deeper meaning to you. Abhyapa uh, johomi. Uh, Vyapada, ill will. That one when we look at five hindrances, uh, we use Vyapada, V. Y A P A D A or B Y A P A D A. We are biapada here. Okay, abiapa johome. So this is a compound word, and and it become tenses here and there. We don't going to go into that. Uh, may I be free from? Actually, the word is ill will, but normally we use it as a mental suffering because ill will here is connected to jealousy also because this is unpleasant feeling it connected to jealousy it connected to sometimes a certain degree of uh, the, the anxiety also you know all this difficulty mental mental state you know. so you wish again may i be free from all the mental suffering then anigo ho me anigo nika means trouble or unease. Anigo. Aniga means without trouble, without all this unease. That means it's connected to the physical suffering, without the physical uneasiness. Then suki atanang pariharami. May I take care of myself happily. Now here, sometimes we think, may I take care of myself happily? Huh? <laughs> then you don't know what it means by that. What does it mean? Because this one, when I was young, uh, very young, uh, when I was thinking of may I take care of myself happily, I can't figure out what is may I take care of myself happily. So the word parihara is to care, to protect, or to give attention to myself, to give a, a, a protection to myself, you know, something like that. Huh? Now, some of you, some of you, when you use these words, uh, it can be very meaningful to you. Some of you, when you use this English word, let's say this English word, may not be meaningful to you because it does not have that impact upon you. Now, some of you, perhaps uh, the Pali word, because you understand the Pali word, you understand their meaning, and then you use those Pali words and the Pali word is meaningful to you, then perfectly all right. So it's a matter of which are the words that is many meaningful to you and there will be going to arouse that meta. Okay? Now for me, uh, for example, uh, so before we go on to, to the next one, sometimes, then after that, uh, like from may I, then you start off may, may, oh, 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 sorry. For example, like when I use, uh, when I use this, I use, may I be free from harm and danger? Okay, may I be free from, to me that is, to me that is powerful. It is meaningful to me. But does the word harm and danger meaningful to you or not? Then you got to ask yourself, what is meaning by harm and danger? Then you got to ask yourself, what creates harm or what creates danger to you? That I'm free from all these things. Then if it's impactful to you, then it would be good to use that as a as a part of your lines. Yeah? Then may I be free from mental suffering? Again here, what is mental suffering? Then mental suffering here, perhaps people go through like uh, to me, uh, yeah? to me that the suffering here like like anxiety, restless mind, or hatred or even sensual desire, you know, this type of mind. Uh, even like some people go through a mental depression, uh, what else? Uh, many things. Uh, uh, uh. 
So all these things uh, that this mental suffering, it means something to me. It really means something. To me. That's why I use the word, may I be free from all mental suffering because it's meaningful to me. Uh, then may I be free from all physical suffering. What do you mean by physical suffering? Uh, then is the pain, the aches, the illness of the body that we go through. Then if this one is easier for us to understand. Uh, then instead of, for example, may I take care of myself happily, then I use the word, may I truly be happy. That I want to be myself, to be truly be happy, to be truly be well and truly be peaceful. To me, that is happily in that sense. Yeah. Okay? Uh, this is happily. Now, for the beginner, for if you are a beginner, uh, I, I will wish that you start off with the, some of the words that I have given you first. Then, later part, uh, when you are more better in the development, uh, then you can slowly change into a somewhat different, but it can still bring meta to you. Yeah? But in the beginning first, let us do with this words first, uh. you still have may I first. So every time you start off with uh, sitting or walking, uh, you start off with yourself first, myself first, uh, myself first. Uh. Uh, then after that, after that when you start off with your myself already, then after that you want to start off with the person or a group of person. Now a person, if the next person, it will be good that you you radiate to somebody that you have certain degree of respect or veneration. Uh, perhaps you must, there might be a mentor to you, perhaps there may be a guide to you, perhaps you have a, a gratitude to him or to her, perhaps he has taught you or she has taught you, perhaps she's a monk or a nun, or maybe maybe a lay person, you know, that you have a uh, good connection and your good respect to them. Uh, uh, so you spread that meta. May you be free from all kinds of harm and danger. And you truly wish the person. And you truly mean it. Uh, uh. Then after that, uh, after when you start off with that, uh, then you'll be good that slowly you expand a little bit more from, yours, from oneself to somebody that you have uh, veneration or respect and then slowly you go into the people around people around generally uh, people around beings around that 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 whether they are there or not there uh, instead of fearing them uh, then this time uh, spread some love to them uh, spread some may you be free from all kinds of harm and danger yeah that would be better. Uh, so when you do that, may I be free from harm and danger. May I, and slowly, slowly and slowly, from yourself, you go to the person that you have veneration, then slowly you go to um, the people around you, and then you slowly go into a bigger circle somehow. For example, like just now earlier on we do, we did the uh, go to the country, and then after that the people, beings, all over the world and then after that finally to all beings in the whole universe and all the beings in all the existence. Uh, uh. For example, let's say may, may the beings, may all beings in this world be free from all kinds of harm and danger. So how do you feel the beings? All you need to do uh, is for me, uh, like for example, when I do it, I I kind of like learn to expand, like, like a bubble, eh? like slowly expand it further and further, reaching out to whether it's up, down, left, right, everywhere. You know, you could, that, that, that the meta is like being able to touch every being, whether it's animal, humans, seen or unseen beings, whichever they are, that it can be touched by this meta in this world. You know? Then you feel it. You feel this meta. Uh, uh, so you start off with this. May I? Then after that, you start off with the people that you respect. Then you start off with the people that you have uh, uh, nearby to you. Then towards the country. Then towards the uh, 
the uh, whole c- whole country, the whole world, and then finally you reach out to the whole universe. You repeat this again and again. A lot of times I tell you, you can't even finish yourself because your hindrances will come. <laughs> but nevertheless, you try. You try. Yeah. <clears throat> now, Now, sometimes some people would like to use instead of may I like, like for example, eh? may I be free from harm and danger? They don't want the, the harm and danger feel not so nice for them. So they say, May I be safe? So, yeah, you are safe la, because you are safe from harm and danger. So they say, May I be safe? Then you wish yourself to be safe from harm and danger. But they like the word safe better than harm and danger. If you find that this word safe is good for you, then well and good. Now, then here, may I be free from all mental suffering? They, they don't like the word suffering, maybe, you know. But may I be happy? Then the happy is the happiness of the mind. So may I be happy? May I be free from all physical suffering? But they don't want to use the word physical suffering. They want to use the word, may I be healthy? Then healthy also can. Then may I be peaceful? May I, you don't want to use, may I be uh, truly be happy? So you can... Uh, may I be well and may I be peaceful. Sometimes, you know, normally when we use it generally, you say, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be well, uh, something like that. No? May you be well and happy, something like that. Usually when we do that in the normally when we everyday life. But this time, uh, when you want to do it as a meditation, uh, make sure that your words are meaningful to you and you are sincere in radiating your words. Uh, and you are sincere in radiating your words. Okay? Now, we're going to come back to this just for a short while. Now, I want to touch upon a little bit on the walking and sitting. It's not big in the walking and sitting meditation. Uh, it's not big. Now, in the walking meditation, uh, in the walking meditation, in metta walking meditation, then it will be good now you divide it into two parts one is the mindfulness part and one is the metta part because every form of meditation that you are doing in vipassana you better have mindfulness or every form of meditation that you want to do whether it's worldly meditation or non-Buddhist meditation, uh, make sure you have mindfulness. If you don't have mindfulness, this is the first sign that is, you are going to go mad. <laughs> you no, know, Sometimes people meditate under mong, those, those type of things. You know? uh, this is exactly why. Because the first thing, the mindfulness is not there. So you better have mindfulness first before you arouse any form of metta. Because the metta does not come if the mindfulness is not strong. Uh, so how are you going to do this mindfulness? This mindfulness again, uh, this is not vipassana, you know. This is just basic mindfulness. Uh, at least a continuous basic mindfulness, not a vipassana type of mindfulness. You're going to look into uh, lifting, pushing, dropping, heart soft, changing, and so on. You are not going to go into that. In this mindfulness during in the walking meditation, it's more like you keep your mind in the present. You keep your mind in the present. Now in this walking meditation, it's going to be, some of you, it's going to be difficult to walk at home because your house may not, or your apartment, your condo may not be that big. Some people want maybe a much more bigger. So, if you can find a part of a lane, uh, a path in your house, whether it's inside your house or outside in your garden, if you have a garden, then if you can find that, then you determine that length. Usually, usually, uh, 15 steps will be good. If you, your house got 15 steps, uh, 15 steps of length will be good. If cannot, do as much as you can. All right? Do as much, maybe seven steps, eight steps, boom. Sapu lah, you know, take also lah, you know. <laughs> you cannot get, if you have more, then it will be good. Now, how do you do this mindfulness thing? Huh? 
Now, when you start off with the walking meditation, uh, you don't go too fast and you don't go too slow. You go fast enough uh, or slow enough uh, that the mind can follow the movement of the leg. Okay, that can follow the movement of the leg. Just like right step, left step, right step, left step, right step. And sometimes you can able to label it as just right step, left step, right step, left step. Or you can watch the whole leg that is walking also. That your leg is moving, right step, right movement, left movement, right movement, left movement. Uh, then you keep the, the mind in that way. Just walk up there, up, down, up, down. You stop for a while, then you turn, then you start again, the walking, right step, left step. And all this time, uh, make sure that your eyes and your ears, uh, especially the eyes, uh, don't look into all kinds of your things in your house. You know, Just keep your eyes uh, five or six feet in front of you. Uh, keep the eyes five, six feet in front of you. Uh, one or two meter in front of two meters in front of you, yeah? that would be good if you keep that. Yeah? Uh, so you do this walking meditation first. Don't worry about meta. Keep that mindfulness first. Yeah? Then what do you do? After that, you slow down a little bit. If you feel that the mindfulness is coming in, uh, you feel that your mind is much more in the present already. Uh, then you start off with the. Uh, I'm sorry. Then only you you sorry. Then you continue with the mindfulness. Let it consolidate the mindfulness first. Let Make sure that your mind is in the present and your mind is not running here and there. And when the mind is not running here and there and it's more continuous, uh, uh, that it can be also a good sign that you can start off with metta already. Yeah? Uh, when you start off with metta, okay, you continue the walking. What the, the speed that you are going, which is a bit slower and not too fast, uh, uh, then you continue with that meta. Then here, may I be free from harm and danger. May I be free from all mental suffering. May I be free from all physical suffering. Then you slowly la, go, go up while you are walking. Uh, uh, sometimes the walking, uh, the attention at that time uh, when you are doing meta is not on your legs anymore. It's more on your heart, it's more on your mind already. Uh, uh, you just may I, may I be well and happy may I be peaceful uh, uh, then you walk how long you should walk it will be good uh, it will be good that first first you just just start off with maybe 15 minutes or one hour if you can uh, yeah. maybe some of you are beginners maybe 45 minutes but those who have done meditation before uh, keep it to 15 minutes to one hour when you want to do this meditation, walking first, because I want you to gather up that mindfulness first. Now, if you find that the meta cannot work, uh, then go back to mindfulness again. Uh, doesn't doesn't matter one. All you need to do is make sure that your mindfulness is there. Uh, now, after that, after that walking meditation, uh, it will be good you continue to your sitting meditation. When you continue to the sitting meditation, uh, that time, if you find that your mind is not running, uh, uh, that time you sit down, you relax, you put your, uh, your, your seat ready and so on, uh, then you start ready. May I be free from all kinds of harm and danger. <clears throat> May I be free from all mental suffering. Then you slowly go, one after another, one after another. Uh, uh, <clears throat> So you keep your so you keep your um, mindfulness and the meta there. If your meta is there and you can able to radiate, uh, that means that at this time the thinking and the and the planning and whatever is will not come in. But if your meta is somewhat loose already or mindfulness somewhat loose already, then your thinking starts going to come in already. Uh, when your thinking comes in, that is where your mindfulness is the one who detects it. Oh, thinking come in already. And then if the thinking come in, you don't go into the thing, the story of the thinking. Make sure that you don't you know that this is just mind-made object. This is only thinking. You put them all aside, go back to your meta. S say it's easy. Uh, say it's easy. 
Uh, so this is somewhat something on the sitting meditation. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be going to talk a little bit more on the sitting and walking. Uh, so roughly, this is roughly uh, 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 beginner's aspect of the meditation. So how long should you sit? Try to sit as long as you can. I know a lot of you are beginners. Beginners, uh, at least try to sit half an hour. If you, those who are able to meditate, try to sit one hour. Yeah? Mm. Then, before we go, uh, just, just for a short one, uh, make sure that you have sincerity and truthfulness in your words and meaning. That means whatever that you do, that for example, may I be free from harm and danger that you truly mean it. You truly mean it. Uh, not, not to say that you just lip service mentally, you know, but you must truly mean it. Mean it uh. Tomorrow again, I will also mention about what not to hold on the image. For example, when you, when you are going for your person that you respect, that the teacher, may, I, may he be free from harm and danger. Don't try to keep his face in front of you, you know. The face is not important, but it's the meta is important. The arousing of the meta towards a conceptual face. Uh, because that sometimes that person that you venerate, uh, that it can give rise meta easily. But you don't go and hold on the face in your mind. If if not, it's going to be uh, a bit uh, problematic. Okay? Now, here, we're going to stop here for now. And, uh, and uh, tomorrow at the same time, 8.45 p.m. Malaysian time, uh, you come in again, then we'll start off with again with a little bit more on the sitting and walking. Uh. Now, so let's see what, what's in the chat right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lim Ga Hong Lim Suk Ching. Okay. Bante, eyes on the floor. Yes, the eyes must be on the floor when you are doing walking. Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> no, um, the, the, the chat also asked, there's a one more question coming up. May you sleep sound? May you have enough meals? No, you don't do like that. No, you, 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 don't, you don't do like that. What we want now, for example, when we radiate meter, huh, we want to look into the overall perspective of a person. For example, if you do like, oh, now a lot of people are suffering in COVID. May all of them be free from harm, be free from danger, free from all this COVID. If you do like that, huh, your mind is turning into compassion already. It's still good. Lah. I mean, it's still good, but you're not doing meta because you're, you're focusing on the suffering aspect of the person. What I will want uh, is to look at the overall perspective of a person. Whether the person is sick or not sick, you give them that friendliness, you give them that loving kindness, you give them that sincerity, you give them that happiness. Not just because they must be sick or, and so on. You know. it's whether they are sick or not, it's all in your radar. radar you know. Uh, in that sense. Uh, so you don't say, may you sleep soundly, may you have enough meals. That is not good for meta. That is very, very, very narrow, very narrow, and it's not very good. Okay? All right. Okay. So we stop here for now. Nah? So I take up a lot of your time already. Now, okay, let's just go into uh, sharing of uh, merits. Uh. <clears throat> 